And uh, I am a disciple of uh, Siddha Swarupananda Paramahamsa and Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami. Uh, and I thought that today, can we have some high mids? Where's Bala? Can it, my, it sounds very rumbly. Just a few more high mids. That would be, oh, that's, no, that's fine. That's fine. Ask for EQ and you get a new microphone. Howdy, Bo. So. Uh, all evening I've been thinking, what am I going to talk about this evening, especially with so many uh, wonderful guests. I thought maybe I could start by reading a little bit from the Nectar of Devotion, which is the summary study of the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, about bhakti techniques. I'll just make this very short. This is by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. Like I said, it's a summary study of uh, the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. The techniques in Bhakti of hearing and remembering. The beginning of Krishna consciousness and devotional service, or Bhakti, is to hear hearing. In Sanskrit, it is called Shravanam. All people should be given the chance to come and join devotional parties, like this one, so that they may hear. This hearing is very important for, the, for progressing in our love of God, in our Krishna consciousness. When one links his ears to give oral reception to the transcendental vibrations of the name of God, he can quickly become purified and cleansed in the heart. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has affirmed that this hearing is extremely important. It cleanses the heart of the contaminated soul so that it quickly becomes qualified to enter into devotional service and understand bhakti and Krishna consciousness. So, hearing is extremely important and we may like to hear stories about Lord Sri Krishna. Ah. There are so many wonderful stories and stories about the Lord's devotees as well. I wanted to relate to you this evening a lovely story that has to do with the ears. There was a great king in India a long time ago, 
near the beginning of Kali Yuga. He was called uh, Parga. His daughter was called Pritha. One day, the great sage came to visit his kingdom. When the sage visited for a few days, the king asked his daughter to please see to his needs, see to whatever it was he needed, make sure he got his food, make sure that he was satisfied in every way with uh, his stay with the king. This is, the sage's name was Durvasa Muni. After some days, the Durvasa Muni was about to leave, but he was very, very pleased with the attentiveness of the king's daughter. And she was very young, maybe 12 years old. And he decided that he would give her a boon. And so, just before he left, he called her aside and he said, I'm going to give you a mantra. Now, with this mantra, you can call any of the demigods and they will please you in any way. Well, Pritha didn't really know what that meant, or, but she thanked him, and she was very excited to get such a gift from a sage. Durvasa Muni left, and that very evening, or that very, yeah, evening, just at sunset, she decided that she would try it out and see what this mantra would really do. And so, as, she, as the sun was setting outside of her window, she thought about Surya and she spoke the mantra. And suddenly, her bedroom was filled with light. And Surya, the god of the sun, appeared. And she was overwhelmed. She was like, oh my goodness, wow, it worked. And he said, my dear daughter, thank you very much. I am at your service. And she said, well, that's all right. I just wanted to see if the mantra would work. That's OK. I, I, uh, I, I see that it works now. Thank you very, very much. Uh, you can go home now. But Surya said, I don't think you understand the mantra. The, did, did the sage not tell you that I was obligated to please you, to fulfill your heart's desire? She said, yes, yes, but I really don't uh, need anything or have anything right now. I'm not in any, you know, I'm, I'm fine. She was very nervous. And he said, no, I don't think you understand the meaning of what the sage Durvasa told you. When you call me with this mantra, I must give you a child. She's like 12 years old. And she's like, oh my, what? Well, I can't, but you, you yeah, but I, I, but no, 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 no. No, 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 this is, not, this is not going to work. I'm 12 years old, I'm 
I've never, I, I'm not, I can't, I mean, what would, how, how will I, how, how could I ever have another husband? I mean, I would be, Surya said, don't worry. We'll, we're not talking about an ordinary birth, we're talking about a birth with a, a God as a father. And I won't, I will not deflower you. I will not make it so that you are no longer virgin. She said, what? But uh, can't you just go away? No, I can't. I can't just go away without giving you a child. And so she actually that very evening gave birth to a child. She gave birth to the child out of her ear. Out of her ear, she gave birth to this child. And this child came out, and the child had earrings. And the child had a breastplate, a golden metallic-looking breastplate called Kavacha and Kundalas. And she looked at this beautiful child. And as the child was born, Surya left, left her with the child. And the sun was just beginning to rise again as he left, of course. And she looked at this beautiful child and, and she thought, what am I going to do? What, what am I going to do with this child? I mean, I... How can I, well, I, if people come in and they see, well, so she looked around her room and she, she found a, a very nicely woven basket and she wrapped the baby. She said, I will know you always by your kavacha and kundalas. And she put the child in the river, which was just outside of her window. And the child floated away. And Pritha knew that she would someday, or she felt that she would someday see him again, her firstborn child. And thus begins the story of the Pandavas. This is the early story of the Pandavas and, the, re and the, the story of her son, who became known as Radheya, or Karna. So, be careful. <laughs> be careful what you do. Be careful what you say. And ultimately, probably Dravasa Muni would have been better off giving her the Hare Krishna mantra. Would have saved a lot of trouble. But in any case, as I started off saying in the beginning, hearing is very, very important. When we hear the name of God, and we repeat the name of God. And we remember the names and pastimes of the Lord and his devotees. These things are transcendental. They transcend this world. They transcend this life. And if we can uh, simply engage in hearing hearing about Krishna, hearing about Krishna's devotees, hearing about his disciples and devotees, then our lives can become perfect. So, chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Thank you very much. Hare Ba.
Are there any questions? I hope some of you understood. It's a nice story. Shall we do the eight prayers now? I'm sorry? Next Sunday, not today. Okay. We go to today? You mean now? We're going to the mall? <laughs> what are we doing? We do more chanting. More chanting. Oh, I thought you said mall chanting. Okay. Haribo. So with that in mind, let's chant. Hare Krishna. Haribo.